Guys, I am finally here with High Impulse. You've heard me talk about them a number of times in the past. I'm here with Paula Breda, who has generously decided to give me some of her time today. Thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you for being here. So tell me about this hybrid engine. What makes it different from others? Oh, the hybrid engine is a simpler configuration with respect to the liquid engines that you see, for example, from SpaceX or NASA, everybody sees them. Uh, there is a very good example here. For example, you have uh, Ariane Group with Avinci. You can just go there and see the complexity of the pipelines on top because you have uh, turbo pumps and then you have to pressurize the system through them. In our case, we have uh, liquid, oxygen, uh, liquid oxygen as oxidizer, but our fuel is solid. So we are using paraffin, which is basically candle wax, but with some additives on it. And, and this makes le less complex because we lose one part of the complexity through the high pressure system. Plus the handling of the whole, uh, throughout the whole process, the production, and also uh, from the operator point of view is way more safe. And it's basically, it's not exploding unless, unless you ignite it. Is, is only a substance I became familiar with pretty recently. I mean, what led you to decide to go with this unusual solution? We have a solid foundation on this. Our four founders had been working at the student group from the University of Stuttgart in Germany, and they've been uh, researching hybrid propulsion since 15 years, 20 years about. So this is what they started. They had the student group at the University of Stuttgart, which is also close to the German Aerospace Center in Lampolshausen. And they had a test facility for small scale engines. So um, in 2018, they developed, a, there was a competition, Sunday rockets for students, and they developed a, a rocket which was a 10 kilonewton of thrust. And with this, they, they won the um, altitude record of 30 kilometers. So this is why our four founders who were into this group, but also parallel working at the DLR, two of them, they decided to say, okay, so this looks nice for a startup as a business, so let's try to have it as a business and create our mini launcher. I get asked almost on a weekly basis why I made the decision to move to Europe, to move away from the hub of spaceflight, where everything really started, where all of the most advanced developments are taking place in the United States. Why would I want to go to Europe, where everybody is at best launching sounding rockets or rockets capable of maybe taking up a ton or a little bit more? Isn't that just small potatoes and uninteresting? Well, this is a burgeoning, blossoming market here in Europe. And unlike all of the companies that you just saw their logos, these are companies that are backed up by relatively modest funding. And their objective is to make space accessible to the average individual. Not to say that anybody's going to ride up on one of these rockets into space on a trip, but it gives access to universities, to small laboratories, to a variety of different scientific institutions who couldn't previously make it to space, and now maybe they can. The SR-75 rocket from High Impulse is the first step in this company's objective to revolutionize access to space by making it both affordable and environmentally sustainable. 
they are aiming to dismantle the current barriers of high costs and long waiting times and to turn low Earth orbit into the premier industrial hub of the 21st century. So what is this small launcher that just took off a couple of days ago? Well, it's powered by a hybrid engine, as you've already been able to gather, running on what's called a paraffin-based fuel. Paraffin fuels are safer to operate, they're more efficient, and they have a lower environmental impact compared to kerosene propellants. The high-impulse paraffin propulsion is nothing less than a revolution in rocketry with a global and historic impact. And that's according to Virgil Labrador, editor-in-chief of Satellite Markets and Research in the United States. So High Impulse is making a big impact around the world with this little bitty rocket. Now, because Saks of Ord was not quite ready for High Impulse, they decided to take off from South Australia instead, and all of the talk, all of the lead up, all of the hype that I've been sending you guys' way up to this point over the last several years finally came to fruition. This sounding rocket, which is the precursor of a larger rocket that will be able to take up to 600 kilograms to orbit or double the Rocket Lab Electron, well, in a momentous and historic moment, the first reusable rocket to ever be launched by a German company, it finally took flight. I would have loved to have covered this event in person. It would have been the experience of a lifetime and quite a momentous occasion, certainly newsworthy, but at the same time, I wasn't going to try yet another fundraising effort with my supporters after all the support I've been getting lately. The simplest solution to make sure that I can attend events like this from here on out without having to ask anybody is if 1% of my subscribers become Patreon supporters. You can do that for as little as 10 cents a day. And if 1% of my supporters back me up at the $5 level, I will be able to attend events like this at least six times a year and probably more. You know what to do. It's all in the description. Congratulations to High Impulse and for this amazing accomplishment. We don't know what sort of altitude the rocket achieved. We're going to get all of those details later on because it's recoverable. It has a parachute recovery system for the booster, which, by the way, includes reusability as well. Very exciting. And the next launch will be taking place from Saks of Ord. I absolutely do not intend to miss that one, and that will be happening later on this year. So until then, I urge all of you to stay angry about space.